Hi everybody, Martin the Flick and Feathers again today and I'm tying a killer little bass worm that I've been working on for the past few seasons. It's, I call it the Fukushima worm, obviously I live in Japan so um, that's kind of contributed to the name of this. Uh, as always there will be a full material list in the description below and um, a link to social media and Patreon for anybody who would like to support the channel. I would really appreciate that, that'd be great. So, to start I'm going to stick um, a pin in the vise, just wax my thread, just to get a little bit of grip. And then I'll just start with three turns or so, just enough to make a catch. And uh, then I'll take about five inches of chenille. Obviously you can adjust the, the length of the chenille to suit yourself. Okay. This is uh, tr Antron Trilobo Antron Chenille, and it's the large size that I use. I'm just going to melt the end just to seal it all in. And if you don't, if you don't melt it, it will fray. Right. Wet your fingers. Just get a wee touch there. And then two, three wraps again. Don't need a lot of. You don't need a lot of um, thread wraps here. You're you're not trying to bind it to the needle or anything. Then I'm going to take one of these curly fly tails from hairline. I'm just going to offer it in say three wraps and I put we'll just put a half hitch on right, otherwise it can unravel on the needle right that's it it's, tra it's trapped and I'll just fold the tag back tie over it. Right, I don't bother trimming this tag off, I just fold it back, tie it down, two or three wraps. And you use your finger there just to stabilise that as you pull your thread off your bobbin. And then, quick finish. Trim off the waist. Right, so that, you can see that spins on the pin, but there's nothing really you can do about that because you don't want to tie it on too tightly that it doesn't move. Um, now, I'll just seal these thread wraps with some Head cement, be generous because right, it's, it's quite a soft material um, and it's just these exposed threads. There's, there's, there's not much holding of it in here. And then we're ready to progress with the rest of the fly. I mean, normally, I would tie, I'd make half a dozen or whatever tails, you know. And then carry on. So, come to the hook. This is a Gamakatsu B10S, size 1 for this size of worm. Obviously, you can adjust the size to suit the size of worm that you want to tie. And I've got a 5mm tungsten bead. I'm going to run on some thread.
to my wing or waist. I'll just run this around the bend stop just you know about halfway around. I'll take my thread back up to behind the bead. And then we're ready to tie in my mono for the weed guard. This is just twenty pound hard nylon I'm using. So you could use thirty pound standard nylon. Like to push that in behind the back of the bead. I just wind it back. Try and keep it on top of the shank, which you can do by pulling it slightly against the direction that you're winding the thread. And I like to just have a, put a couple of layers of thread at the back here, where the thread wraps are going to probably be exposed. You could, if you like, use um, like a hot colour here, like a fluorescent orange or something, just to add a bit of like a hot spot. Now, as this thread is likely to be exposed, put a super glue. Just run it along the whole stuff. While I blend my dubbing. So, using SLF for this. A dark brown to match the, the chenille. But I'm also going to add uh, some other colours. I'm adding a tiny amount of fluorescent yellow to this. Well, any fluorescent colour would do. And a wee bit of olive. I'm just going to blend it together fairly roughly. Right, and the reason for that will become clear. So, that super glue should be just about dry. Just tap away any excess. And then I come in with some head cement. Right, if you if you coat super glue with head cement, you get a very, very hard, very durable finish. So it's well worth well worth adding for anyone when exposed weed guard like that, weed guard tie-in point like that, I should say. Um, really, t really makes for a tough fly. Take my thread back to the front, and then I'll just catch in this chenille. And I'll stop a bit line where the barb was before I crushed it. Right, and you can just, I mean, you don't need to worry about tying over that wet cement, that just, I mean, that actually helps bind down the, the, uh, or attack, like, either a bit of durability to the chenille body, or the chenille tie-in point. So now we can dub our body with this mix of chenille, uh, mix of SLF, sorry. Be fairly generous with your dubbing here. Um, you can tighten it up as you go. It's good if you can keep it quite tight because we're going to brush it and you want to maintain a fair degree of durability. It's perfect. So when you get to, I'm about a touch more. When you get to, say, about an eye width, an eye length behind the bead, I like to sort of just tidy that up, make a nice base. And then I'll come in with my Velcro and rub. And I'll brush this out. I like it nice and rough. So, I'll just sweep that back. Right. It's easier to brush before you put the weed guard in. Now you'll be able to see here, so although this still looks quite brown and natural, if I put the UV lamp on you can see there are the wee bits of fluorescence that pop. I mean that's more visible to fish um, than it is to us I think, but it helps them pick it out in the cover. So 
At this stage, I like to tie in my weed guard, which will catch your chenille. Pass it through the jaws of the vise, and I'll offer it up on my off side, roughly the length that I want. Three wraps, hold it, I can adjust it if I feel I need to. That's fine. Wraps in front and behind. That locks it in quite nicely. Then I fold it over and wind back across. That just locks that weed guard securely in place. Can't pull out. And we're ready to tie in the legs. So I like silly legs for this, but you can use whatever you want, right? Um, spinner bait skirts are good. If you want to go to the, the or jig skirts, if you go to like the bash shop, maybe some nice mixed colours. I'm just using brown with a copper flake here, but again, whatever you prefer. So I've got three legs, and I've just cut them in half, and. I fold them around my thread and just catch them in. I'll catch one set on my off side. And you can see there, hopefully, that I've left this look, half of them attached, still attached to the tabs, just for ease, ease of control. Do the same on my side. Three or four wraps is plenty. Then I'll come in with a little bit more dubbing just to tie all this together. Same stuff, same just SLF mix. Tie a couple of wraps behind the legs here. Come in one, just like one in between, and then wind in in front of them. And when you're quite happy, you can come in, whip finish, pull it tight, use your thumbnail, it will help bury it in behind the bead. And then another one. Last thing to do is just to separate these legs, play with them if you like. Just get a wee last rub to pick out some of this dubbing at the head there. And there you go, that's the Fukushima worm, very effective bass fly. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you can tie some of these up and go and catch some fish on it. So, thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines. Bye.